So having given up on the indefinite integral, I'm going to talk about the definite integral. And this one really does extend well. A definite integral of a single variable function measured the area under the curve. This area was defined by the graph. While I still have graphs of scalar fields, under the graph there is still a region. Here's a graph I used earlier. Instead of an area under this, there is a volume underneath. And I can try and calculate that volume. This is the meaning of the indefinite integral. The notation for single variable definite integral indicated the interval which was underneath the area. The area under the curve is the area defined by the interval a to b. For the multivariable integral, I can now take any set u in the domain and ask for the volume above u but below the graph of the function. Therefore, the notation indicates this set u. It's no longer as simple as just going from a to b but it's now as complicated as any subset of the domain. The dx in the single variable integral could be thought of as an infinitesimal piece of length. Instead of that, the notation now measures an infinitesimal piece of the domain. If the domain is in R3 or in higher dimensions, then this is a piece of volume or hypervolume, which is the higher dimensional version of that, and it's written dv. If f is just a two variable function though, the domain has area, so this is written dA. In any case, the definite integral is now the volume, or in higher dimensions, the hypervolume, above this set u and under the graph of the function. That's the idea of the definite integral. But how is it defined formally, mathematically? Well, I need to do the same thing as I did for the single variable integral, a limit of an approximation process. This was called the Riemann definition of the integral. In the single variable case, it looked like this. Dividing the integral up into pieces, each piece had width b minus a over n and height f of x case star. And that product between these two pieces was the area of a rectangle. Then I added up all the rectangles to get an approximation of the area under the curve. And then I took a limit of the approximation process where the number of rectangles increased to infinity. In the limit, the area becomes exact, at least if the function is integrable if the limit exists. The same setup exists for the multivariable integral. I start with an interval, which I defined in the first video on topology this week. I'll define this for a three variable function here, but the definition is general. I divide the interval, interval up into pieces. The result is n cubed boxes in the larger box, since each interval that defines the larger interval, each edge of the box, is broken up into pieces. Then the side of each small box is some piece of volume, which I'll call delta v. Then the height, so to speak, of the graph is the function applied to x, y, z for some point in each of the smaller pieces of the interval. And as it did in single variable calculus, this star notation indicates some choice of a point in a subpiece of the interval. Then the product with these two gives a hypervolume, a four-dimensional volume of a piece of the total hypervolume under the graph. Then I take all these pieces, all n cubed of them, to get an approximation. And finally, I take the limit as the number of pieces goes to infinity. If the limit exists, then the function is integrable over this set, over this interval. So when does the limit exist? When is a function integrable? Well, the good news here is that all continuous functions are integrable. That makes sense, since a continuous function defines a well-defined volume under its graph. And the situation is actually a bit better, and I need this definition because it will be useful for the remainder of the course. If I can break the integral, or the interval rather, the prism, the box, into a finite set of smaller boxes, and if the function is continuous in all of these, then the function is called piecewise continuous. All piecewise continuous functions are indeed integrable. And this should also make hopefully a little sense. Over each piece of the interval, the volume or hypervolume is well defined, and I can just add up these volumes, even if the function has a jump or discontinuity between the pieces. 
The definite integral is defined in a very similar way to the single variable integral. It is a limit of a sum that defined an approximation. Unsurprisingly, it has most of the same properties. First, it is linear. It splits up over addition and subtraction, and any constants can be factored out. If one function is larger than another over the whole interval, then the integrals of those functions have the same relationship. Finally, if two intervals i and j are disjoint, they don't share any points other than maybe their boundary, then the integral over the union of the two intervals is the sum of the two integrals.